I'm starting a pretty complicated carving here. It's from uh, this book, How to Carve Wood by Richard Butts. Uh, it's a pretty old book. Um, I think it was published in like the early 1980s. And I want to do this osprey that he has in this book. And there's several parts to it. You got the wings are separate, the tail is separate, the body, and then the feet and talons you do separately as well. So I printed off my patterns and I glued them to my boards. And I was going to just cut these off on the bandsaw. My bandsaw is way too small and I was going to use a friend's, but uh, it just didn't work out. So I'm going to just uh, rough it out using gouges here. Um, this takes a bit longer than if I had a bandsaw, so it's definitely something I need to purchase at some time. But uh, uh, if I just work at it here, I got my clamp and sit down comfortably, I can rough this out in about, oh, probably about an hour for the, uh, the body and the wings. Um, here I'm uh, drilling a, a hole here because that beak is going to be pretty fragile when I carve it because there's end grain running up and down through it. So I drilled that hole and now I'm going to uh, saw a relief cut here. And that way uh, when I rough it out with my gouges I can come at it from the angle like you see here and um, I don't have to worry about it breaking off through that beak area. I'm using primarily a number six gouge. It's uh, 35 millimeters wide or it's roughly, it's just shy of an inch and a half wide. Um, this works pretty well for roughing up material like a five or a six sweep. And here I also made a saw cut here at that deepest point. You can see there's a little bit of a uh, up and down action. And that way I can uh, gouge or you know, cut into it without uh, having to worry about breaking off parts that I don't want um, broken off. Um, and when I get down to the kind of the final pieces then I, I, I take it a little slower. So I finished with the back and front of it and uh, I had printed off extra pieces of the uh, the pattern here and so then I was able to draw in the outline for the sides then as well and then just continue the process of using a gouge and sometimes a saw to uh, to remove material where it's not needed. Uh, I had a, quite a bit of chunk here that uh, um, it just made more sense to, to saw it off than to, to, than to use the gouge because it was getting hard to, to clamp there. So then I was on to the wings. I put both wings on one board and um, you can see it kind of does a up and down motion for the wings. So I'm just removing material here in the middle by first coming one way and then the other. This is basswood I'm using, so this is pretty easy to carve. And then when I get that stuff in the middle, once I uh, get to that where it meets, then I come across grain, and that helps clean that all up and remove the bulk of that, that waste. And I just keep doing that until I get down to the line, close to it, and then um, I like to put away the gouge when I'm getting uh, real close. That way um, I have a little bit more um, feel for um, removing material. And then again, go across the grain to remove uh, where those two pieces meet. And here I'm just, basically I'm just cleaning up all the cuts here um, with the final, final uh, rough cuts to get it down uh, to where I want it before I do my actual carving. 
Here I've got a number nine gouge. I think it's a 25 millimeter wide or about an inch uh, wide. And again, I've got, instead of using a saw cut, I can just go across with this. Um, it wasn't very deep here, so I didn't feel I needed to use a saw. I just used the, this number nine gouge and uh, go down to that lowest point and then come in from either side with that number six gouge to finish up the cuts. When I come across the grain here, I don't want to bring the, the gouge all the way to the end. Um, I try to stop most of the time before I get all the way to the end. Um, it may look like I'm going across it here, but I had done a little bit of a relief cut on the ends there. Um, and uh, now again, I'm cleaning this up and I'm stopping short of the ends uh, because I, if you, you don't have the, the support of the fibers w when you get to the end of the board and it can tear it out. And now I'm doing the underside of the wings and again, just using that same trick, cutting down to the deepest part and then come at it from both directions. That way I don't have to worry about, you know, again, I don't have to worry about tearing out in places um, accidentally. I think it took me about, uh, about an hour and 15 minutes, maybe an hour and a half or so to rough this, uh, the wings out and the um, body as well as the tail stock, which I didn't show here because that one was that was pretty easy. I could just do that on the bandsaw, um, my small little 12-inch bandsaw that I have. Um, probably would have only taken about 20 minutes on a bandsaw, if that. Um, so, time-wise, this takes a lot longer to do it this way. This project is going to take me a while to complete. So that's why I'm going to break this up into uh, a few different videos. So I've got this roughing video and then I'll show how I carve all the pieces. And I'm even going to paint it as well. So this will be a series of videos and then I'll likely do one at the end that shows the whole thing at once. So I look forward to sharing all that with you. And then I was able to trace out my pattern again. And then now I was able to run this through the bandsaw to finish it up. So I've got my wings roughed out. And they're still pretty thick here, but that's okay. I want to be able to uh, shape them uh, any way I want um, as I go along. And then there you can see the, the tail that's going to go in that little slot there. I didn't show how I made that slot either. I did that on the table saw, uh, just a couple passes on the table saw. Thanks for watching. I appreciate the support.